to understand how an Indian soldier feels in Kashmir. And if you want to view Kashmir through the eyes of the Indian soldier, there are two things that you need to understand and understand very clearly. One, what is the DNA of the Indian Army? And two, who is that soldier who makes the Indian Army great? Now, if you speak to a general, and I'm sure most of you would have heard generals as motivational speakers and addressing you at various forums, many generals will tell you about national security. They will tell you about tactics. They will tell you about theater operations, nuclear deterrence. But I will tell you what the Indian Army actually does at the ground level. The Indian Army is a blunt instrument. As I've said before, it's not a scalpel, it's a broadsword. Our core job is to kill enemies of the state and to protect India from all enemies, foreign and domestic. That is what we do. This is the largest volunteer service in the world. And truth be told, and not because I'm from that very institution, but truth be told, trust me when I say this, it is the most fearsome fighting machine you've ever seen. Now the Indian Army soldier. Who's this kid? He's probably your age. If he's an officer, he's probably a graduate or has done graduation through the NDA or has gone through IMA or OTA after graduation. Most probably he comes from a class B or class C city. Very few from class A cities. This kid, and I'm saying kid because many of you might feel offended saying that we are 23, 24. Why are you calling him a kid? Because anybody in that place is a kid. You're never old enough to see bloodshed in your life. And that is the truth. These people are the backbone of the Indian Army, not the fighter jets of the Air Force, not the Bofors guns, not the Arjun tanks. It is the infantry soldier on ground. It is that infantry soldier, that special forces soldier, who four days back crossed over into Pakistan occupied Kashmir. And I'm not at a liberty to tell you today how many people we killed in Kashmir. Now, I have a grass cutting theory I was sharing with some of the students here. And people often accuse me of being violent, but I'm a soldier, that is my trade. Okay, we're supposed to be violent, we're not peace loving people by nature. Dealing with Pakistan, should be of similar function like cutting grass. You have a lawn in your house, every week you cut grass. It is not the grass's fault, but grass gets cut. Let us not wait for Pakistan to provoke us and then we retaliate. We should be doing the provoking and we should cut this grass every week. That is how you handle Pakistan. About Kashmir, Kashmir is an integral part of India. In 1947, Pakistan invaded Kashmir and took away one third of Kashmir. And where that line where the ceasefire was declared was called the ceasefire line. And after 16th December 1971, that ceasefire line was redesignated as the line of control. The line of control is the single most dangerous place on this planet. And I will tell you why we are in Kashmir. Many people object. Why do you need 6 lakh Indian Army in Kashmir? You need the Indian Army in Kashmir because we don't have very friendly neighbors. We have a 760 kilometer long, volatile, mined, barbed, electrified, fenced line of control. And we have a very, very, very active jihadi infrastructure in Rawalpindi in Pakistan. That is why the Indian Army is there in Kashmir. And apart from that, I can also tell you, we are the defenders of the people. We are the defenders of the land. We are in Kashmir, not just to defend the land and the people. We are there to heal the wounded and to lead the lost. And we have done it 
for 25 years in Jammu and Kashmir. There would be a couple of things bothering you about Kashmir. You would have heard a lot of stuff on social media, right? Pellet guns and how they blind little children and how army people are cruel. First of all, before I proceed, I would like to make a statement here and I hope all you young ladies and gentlemen will understand and imbibe. There are certain vested interests both in India and in Pakistan who are trying to give this a religious flavor. Kashmir has nothing to do with religion. All right? The fact of the matter is that Jawaharlal Nehru messed up and we are cleaning that mess. That is the first truth. Pakistan took advantage of a problem that government of India had created already. Now, Kashmir is the direct fallout of the Afghan Jihad. In 1979, the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. They left after 10 years because the Pashtuns just decided to beat them black and blue with American support in dollars, which is a fact. After which, General Ziaul Haq of Pakistan diverted all the resources and all the funds to Kashmir. Now, why does this happen? This happens primarily because Pakistan is geographically narrow. Pakistan is 300 miles wide and 1,000 miles long at an average. The Indian Army, Navy and the Air Force, if the Navy blockades Karachi, Port Bin Qasim, the Indian Army has the capability to reach Afghanistan in 14 hours, cutting across Pakistan. Now, you can well ask me why we don't do that. And there is a reason to it. And that is the reason why Pakistan starts insurgencies and terrorism. So along the Iran border, they have a terrorist group called the Jundullah. On the Afghan border, they have the Haqqani network. And they have the Afghan Taliban. Towards India, in the early 80s, they created the Khalistan movement. And in 1989, Kashmir exploded in everybody's face. So when you don't have your land to fight, because you always want to fight on somebody else's land, you don't want to let the other guy come inside your house and you fight him there. You want to go on the road and fight him there and not allow him to enter your house. So Pakistan started creating these areas of strategic depth. If you can't have the land, you can have influence. And that was the core of Pakistan's strategy. That is why you have 6 lakh Indian army there. And now about pellet guns. I've heard a lot of Indians saying that it's very cruel. You're killing children. That's not true. And I'll tell you the truth today. The Indian army would have told you the truth, but unfortunately they're not allowed to speak. So I'm taking this liberty to speak on their behalf. There is a small bunker in downtown Srinagar with 10 or 15 security personnel with pellet guns because they are not allowed to use real guns. They are surrounded by a mob. They are surrounded by a mob of 1,500, 2,000 people. And these people start off by throwing stones. They start closing in on this bunker slowly and slowly. And all this is happening over a period of one or two hours. It's not happening suddenly. So the pressure increases slowly. When they are close enough, they start throwing acid bottles. When they get closer, they start throwing Molotov cocktails. I hope you know what a Molotov cocktail is. Okay, after this lecture, I'll teach you how to make one, in case you're interested. <laughs> All right? So, the pressure builds up, and a soldier, under pressure, discharges his weapon. Now, what happens? A kid dies, but I want to ask you, what is a five-year-old kid doing in front of a military bunker? Who put that child there? And I will tell you who put that child there. The Huryat Conference put that child there. Because a five-year-old child's janaza is a good A funeral of a five-year-old child makes for very good politics, and that is what the Huryat Conference does. And it's very unfortunate. Huryat Conference gets money from ISI, and it also gets money from our central government. We have been paying the Huryat Conference 100 crore rupees a year, and till now we have paid them 7,700 crore rupees. And I hope the Prime Minister listens to this TED talk and shuts off that tap.
for the past 15 days i don't think you have heard any story about stone pelting in kashmir it suddenly ended <laughs> how did it end because southern kashmir was handed over to the indian army and the indian army i will not get into the details here but people know that they mean business and they don't carry pellet guns and the indian army said that if one rock is thrown there will be consequences south kashmir is peaceful and south kashmir is the place where 65 out of the 75 killed were from south kashmir and today south kashmir is peaceful and in many districts in south kashmir there is no curfew at all peace there is a hadith in islam and it's a very beautiful hadith and you must listen to this the hadith says shamshir ke saaye ke tale jannat palti hai paradise is under the shade of swords if you love your country if you truly love your country you must be willing to protect it with violence you cannot protect a country with peace you need strong tough men who are willing to do violence on your behalf so that your motherland is safe also of importance here is to note and i say this with a great deal of conviction because i was part of that great institution once that the indian army is not just a powerful army all armies are powerful by the very function of carrying a gun you become powerful but the indian army is not just a powerful army it's also a moral army we are victorious not because we are strong we are victorious because we are right and that is the key <laughs> during difficult pregnancies and mountain sides during floods during earthquakes i think most of you will remember those television images of 2 3 years back when shrinagar looked like an island indian army soldiers literally lifted their city on their shoulders and they rescued that city only only to be assaulted by the locals and these are not normal locals because normal everyday kashmiris are very nice people these are a group of politically motivated people financed from across the border who do this this point should be noted here we like to be good we like to do good but let me tell you very categorically we have no patience with traitors or enemies an indian army soldier is an emotionally uncomplicated human being which is not to say that he is not emotionally evolved he is just emotionally uncomplicated he looks at the world through the prism of dost ya dushman and if he thinks that you are a dushman then he will not find you worthy of embracing and consequences follow we have a lot of people and i'm sorry if i'm offending anybody here we have a lot of people from the left the so called liberal intelligentsia of this country who say that why is the army there in kashmir they say there are human rights violations of course there are human rights violations but nobody knows how many people have been put in jail how many people have been court martialed and how many people the army has punished because by the very nature of its being by the very fabric of its being you cannot allow a rule breaker to be part of a disciplined force and that is true but we don't publicize it because it causes damage to the morale of the armed forces but the fact of the matter is army takes very swift action and it's not like a courts where a case goes on for 20 years army court martials one week two week three weeks done finished sentence handed over person court martialed put in jail or sentence carried out or whatever the sentence is a word about the surgical strike now you would have heard or you would have had a media overdose about the surgical strike which happened surgical strikes have been happening for a very long time this was not the first surgical strike what was different about the surgical strike first of all no strike was done at such a magnitude 